Uh, I thought I'd want to first of all ask how you feel how you feel currently about the state of the theatre industry, and obviously you've played such an incredible part by sort of jumping into the fold with Beat the Devil. I thought I'd want to ask about that. Well, obviously, it's, it, it's obviously theatre and all kinds of live performance, ballet, concerts, opera, for musicians, actors, dancers, singers, across the board, it's a horrendous time. Because mm. we all, those of us who value the, the you know, live performance is important for community, mm. whether it's at the grand scale or at a local scale, I think it's a huge leak. It's a sort of like connective life spirit thing which we need and we're, we're denied it at the moment and uh, it's tough it's uh, I have a feeling we'll get through this and we will come back and there will be live performance again but but we don't know when and so now it's a big challenge I mean for actors who have the ability to film that can that seem to be carrying on but for anyone I think I feel very sorry for hugely I feel for musicians and dancers and singers uh, that's t really it's, it's horrendous one of the most striking things about the film is how because of the context there's a discovery of something magical at a time of national adversity yeah. and that felt so striking given what we're going through and that must have been incredibly resonant to watch back and to discuss the film now Given. Yeah, no, we, and we wouldn't know going in that we would be releasing the film at this time. So we hope that it would connect with people because of its, the humanity at the centre and the potency of finding a bit of your history and the earth. And that always touches our souls in ways that are hard to articulate. But when we bring stuff up about what's in the past, it has, it has an effect of equalising our sort of sense of ourselves, our communal spirit somehow. I think it's a very mysterious what it does to encounter the past. And I love going into churches, um, old churches, particularly medieval churches. And I'm not particularly religious at all, but I feel the, I'm always moved by the collective need to come together. I think that's very strong. And so that can happen in a different way in archaeology, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. And how did it feel being buried alive? Because one of the most gripping scenes of the entire film. Early yes, on. It, I think it feels gripping because it's been done well by Simon and, and everyone making it. I mean, I think it wasn't too bad. I mean, I think I got very cold and I was a little bit apprehensive for the first time my face got <laughs> covered in earth. But then I realised that there was enough of a sort of <laughs> crack for me to breathe something and I wasn't left under the earth that long. I was more apprehensive too by the frantic scrabbling hands of the other actors trying to honor <laughs> that they might give, give me a black eye uh, but it all was fine and it was I just got very cold the earth is cold and it was such a, a beautifully tender performance what was it that really drew you to the character initially his integrity his humility his pride in his work without being arrogant at all just sort of belief in his ability his passion for his work too his passion for his archaeology and what it is um his understatedness alongside his dedicatedness i think that uh, was moving i mean i have worked i think there's also i mean i hate making general it's, it's always dodgy to make generalizations about characteristics but i think there is a, a suffolk characteristic of a sort of stoic, calm, persistent. I've, I've worked on farms and worked alongside Suffolk men on farms and there's a sort of calm sense of going forward. They're not just carrying on despite the ups and downs of the farmer or the landlord or the, you know, just walk, carrying on. And I sort of remembered those men when I worked and I was trying to imagine Basil. Why did you first decide to sort of get involved in it and where did that process begin? Um, I, I was sent the script uh, by the producers and they were interested. I think Yerma had just opened and, and, and everyone was, you know, running in to see it, which was really great. But it, it, it meant that there was this kind of interest. They were in, in looking for a... A director at the time and they suddenly thought oh, we should ask him we should see if he's interested 
uh, and I had only just brought out my my um, my first film before just before Yerma as well. So you know, like the you know the two things coincided, and and um, I uh, really I really loved the script. It was you know it wasn't uh, in the line of, uh, of of work of kind of keeping things incredibly contemporary and, and, and in our world. Uh, uh, it was very much, uh, I knew, you know, it was, it's a moment about, it's a, it's, it's a film about a moment in history and, and it has to be a period drama. But I had always wanted to do a period drama and I had also been thinking after The Daughter that I might like to do a period drama next. I thought to myself, either a period drama or a crime thriller. Um, uh, and I, so it ended up being this and maybe the crime thriller will be next, but um, um, I really am interested in cinema and how exactly what I avoid doing in theatre, uh, you know, focusing on, on costumes or, or, or period detail. The reason that I do that is because it, uh, because it, in theatre, it's always it's always a, a paradox and one that I don't feel is useful in the kind of work that I write and the kind of work that I do. Uh, that you're that the, that you're pretending if you said something in a period that you're not also sitting in an incredibly contemporary theatre with incredibly uh, modern technology surrounding you. Um, uh, and you know that paradox is is, is unhelpful in the theatre I find because if you're telling a story you can tell the same archetypal story in the world that we live in and everything we tell should be relevant to the world we live in as well. Um, whereas in cinema you can you can travel through time and you can see the fabric of of the truth uh, of of an uh, uh, of of how people actually lived back then. Uh, you can get the props from then. You can be in the landscapes and the and and the locations. Uh, and you know, if you look everywhere apart from the film crew, you are back in that world. Um, and that then allows you to create this kind of time travel that 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 creates solidarity with the past and creates connection to the to the to the timelessness of, 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 of human existence and how we keep making the same mistakes over and over again and seem to never learn from our past as well, which is in some ways uh, uh, disappointing, but in, 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 in other ways uh, means that, that, we, that we can take a little bit of the pressure off ourselves because it seems to be part of the human condition. And there's something about the idea of discovery during a time of national adversity that seemed really striking at the moment with everything going on with the pandemic and at a time when culture can, and stories can't really be discovered because we can't sort of go out to cinemas, we can't go out to theatres. Uh, has that made the film more pertinent for you, seeing it all coming out right now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's bittersweet, of course, because I would have loved to have, you know, travelled the world uh, to go to the various red carpet events that we <laughs> were going to do. I mean, I, I'm sitting talking to you while Rafe is sitting somewhere else talking to other people in this press junket and carry someone else somewhere else. And, and I just miss them. I wish we could hang out together. Um, uh, and that's what you usually do on these press junkets uh, and, and with the release and with the premieres, you get the chance to reconnect. Um, and yet the fact that we can share a, a story like this, um, which really is, as you say, about the kind of, um, the so, you know, the kind of social solidarity that transcends, you know, categories of class or, or gender um, uh, in a moment of crisis, you know, being able to share that with people right now when they're, they're, we're probably at our most dejected um, uh, in, in various parts of, of, of Europe, particularly, but America as well, uh, at the kind of impossibility seeming, uh, seemingly of things getting better uh, at the moment. And staring down that tunnel and just kind of being able to hand a film over that 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 that, that kind of is about the strong uh, communal struggle 
in the face of a time like that. And, and also that, that says, well, those times were also crises and, and they, they passed. Uh, and these times will pass as well. Um, this, that cycle of, of, of history uh, that can be reassuring sometimes because you, you, when you're in history, you think you're in the, the apocalypse actually, actually because you, you just can't see the next day. Uh, but knowing, but reflecting on the past can sometimes help you with your future. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I was totally in awe, um, transfixed, and I can't wait to see whatever you do both on stage and screen next. I mean, Medea was probably my dear highlight of the decade. So, that was thank awesome. you. Have a lovely rest of the day. Good luck. Th with the thanks, Alex.